welcome to another episode of the Awake Space Astrology Podcast, where I, Lori Rivers, teach you how to take the intellectual knowledge about metaphysics, astrology, and other crazy things and apply them in your daily life. I'm here to help you with some inspiration to make those aspirations realized out in the world. This is a very special episode. My good friend, Nicole Cormier, the numerology lady, joins me to talk about numerology, what it is, what it isn't, and what she's going to be bringing to the mystery school. Of course, and always, we chat with the mods. And this time we're talking past lives. You're not going to want to miss that section here on the Awake Space Astrology Podcast. And of course, as always, Patreon shout outs. That's right, my patrons. Without patrons, this podcast don't happen. This and more here on the Awake Space Astrology Podcast. Right, we've got Mars in Aries on May 24th. That is going to be a very dramatic day on a mundane level. You can expect some big headlines. You can expect probably to see some more violence in the news. And um, I wish it wasn't so, but at the very lowest expression of Mars in Aries energy. It is. It's unfettered aggression. It's it's brute force. It's hit first, ask questions later. And um, so we're going to see some stuff. I would stay out of crowds if possible if you're in a major metropolitan area. Okay. Or a large city. Okay. I would make sure I got my shopping done before that day. I would, I would just... I, I very rarely give a forecast where I say, hey, stay in bed. But if if you can, (laughs) call in sick, stay in bed. Um, I don't like to scare people. I don't. But there's so much going on right now that um, in the world and just looking at the current situation and kind of feeling into the energy, I'm just going to say Mars and Aries, the day it ingresses on May 24th, it's just it's it's going to bring a bang. Um, now on the more positive side of that energy, we'll hear some really cool adventure stories. Um, we might hear some really kind of romantic love stories, believe it or not. Mars and Aries isn't just aggression. It's, it's assertiveness, but we might hear of some very public proposals, um, and loyalty because Aries can be dead on loyal. You know, my brother's in Aries and, um, he is a loyal, sweet human, and uh, yeah, you, you can see him on TikTok because he, he's the one who calls me sissy. Nobody else gets to call me that and lives, um, but he does, and um, you know, even at our decrepit ages, um, he gets away with it, but Aries, Aries energy can be very sweet, very kind, very loyal, faithful, um, really, really can. But on a mass consciousness level, where the energy expresses differently, because you have to remember, at the mundane level, things are different. We could see fires, we could see arsons, we could see, you know, all kinds of force. Um, those types of things will be going on. And so if, if that kind of news bothers you, be really, really aware of it. Um, I don't watch the news. I just don't. I don't watch the news. I look for headlines. I do specific news searches after I do, um, after I do my predictions. Um, I just don't watch mainstream media much at all, just because they talk about the same subjects over and over. And if you look at the way the broadcasts are done. Um, it's designed to evoke feelings and and it's very manipulative so i i have subscriptions to various newspapers from different points of view they're not all aligned with my viewpoints because um i like to get a broad spectrum and i like to see what other people are thinking even if they don't agree with me 
Um, so I, I look at like Reuters and AP for just kind of just here's the facts, ma'am, as much as possible. So those are all things we look at. Um, it's going to be quite the day on May 24th. So, so just be wary of that. I'm going to go over what that means through the chart like if, if through the houses I do this for patrons in the behind the scenes we we go house by house so first house second house what it means to have Mars and Aries activate that area of life including your interceptions so for those of you who are advanced enough to to know that you know if you've got a sign sandwiched between two other signs in a house yes I use Placidus I don't like whole sign I don't think it's very accurate especially for predictions um, if it's activating that Aries interception what does that mean and so um, we'll talk about that a little bit behind the scenes as well <clears throat> the interceptions are always unlocked by transit just an FYI so um, I get asked that a lot on TikTok so that's something we'll be talking about behind the scenes here in just a minute it will be volatile we could see especially here in the west and, and and the southwest especially we could see more wildfires it's already started we could see some arsons there could be more shootings um you know i am just reporting the news i'm not causing it so again i really really urge you not to be in crowded spaces right now um especially on that day because it, it's when a planet changes signs it represents a big change of energy and that energy um is is it, it tends to be dramatic regardless of the sign when a planet ingresses and so and mars is action aggression activity on a personal level this could be good shit you know wherever that wherever mars is moving through your chart this is you know activating you and we've had so much Pisces energy and I don't dislike Pisces I'm a cancer I've had all of this you know energy trining my Sun and Mercury it is right now as I record this um, you know it's it's playing around with my Neptune and Scorpio in my first house you know I've been having a pretty good time and even I'm looking forward to less water right now I could use some activity I've gained I have become that wobbly marshmallow I spoke about in a video. Um, it, 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 I would like to exercise a little more. <laughs> I'd like to have that motivation. I'm staring at my exercise bike right now going, yes, yes, I will. I will ride atop you and uh, drop some poundage. Um, and so next week is going to be a very volatile week. It's not a surprise. It's not a surprise. All you have to do is look out at the world. But don't despair, okay? Don't despair. Don't let them rob you of your energy. I'm giving you a heads up so you know what's going to happen so you can prepare and stay away from trouble instead of running into it. Um, it doesn't mean it's going to happen to you, okay? In fact, the odds of something horrible happening to you are not very good, okay? In general, you're probably going to just have a normal day, hopefully. 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 There's a lot of good mundaneness, you know, and we want to focus on that. But you will be energized in, in, in a certain area of life. And I'm going to go over that with patrons here in a minute. Um, if you aren't a patron and you become a patron because of this podcast, you can catch the replay. The uh, replay is in Patreon itself. And you can watch that where I go over everything. So I'm going to look at the chart here. Uh, for May 24th and oh so that same day and let me just check oh lordy lord have mercy on us all yeah so Mars will be conjunct the moon at zero degrees Aries. <laughs> I hadn't looked at that part yet. It's going to be very volatile. Please stay out of crowded spaces. Okay, if, if you don't have to go into whatever downtown area, please don't. 
Okay. Um, there's, it, there's probably going to be some political decisions happening that really rile people up. We're already on edge. Look at where things have been going. Look at what the Supreme Court has been doing. My guess, looking at this chart, and zero degrees Aries, it packs a wallop when it comes to mundane astrology. And again, don't freak out. Freaking out doesn't help. Be prepared, okay? Just be prepared. If you can do something on a different day, do it. Take some agency on this. But, uh, and they're both close. I mean, Jupiter is at two degrees. And even though the exact conjunction is on May 29th, and by the way, it's a great time to make your luck. Like on a personal level, some of this is really good. But on a collective level where people do not necessarily use their brains, this is, this is not great. Um, yeah. It's, it's something else, and it's all trining, or sorry, it's all sextile the sun. And uh, Mercury will have ingressed into Taurus and is trining Pluto, and they're both retrograde. So we're looking at something from the past. There's some old stuff up on deck that's being revisited, and it's really just going to light things up. Um, it, it's the song popping into my head on a personal level is come on baby let my fire it can be some spicy times <laughs> um, and may you have spicy times indeed again I'm not trying to scare you um, I'm not but we'll we'll make sure I'm talking about this on TikTok live streams and in the discord um, the best way like I said looking at this chart <clears throat> Um, let me give you the times. Um, and I'm looking at it for Los Angeles. And no, I'm not going to look at everybody's timing and everybody's place. I, I just don't have time for that. It's going to be in the afternoon on the West Coast, evening on the East Coast. So this could be something, I don't even know what day the 24th is. So the 22nd is Sunday, so Monday, Tuesday. Maybe it's a bar, maybe it's like some kind of sporting event. Um, it could be, I, it's, it's interesting when I look at directional for here, it's West, west of Los Angeles so maybe something in Hawaii we could see some volcanic action happen um, we, so and if it is that it would be you know or fires again um, it's very very volatile so and I know there's people who will say well if you say it then it becomes it but not really not when it comes to astrological things. I'm giving you a range of what could happen. They're all in the realm of possibility. Now, what is probable? That's where we look at what's going on right now in the world. So this is even how you do like a political forecast without astrology. We look at all the potential happenings, like what could happen from best case to worst case. And then we look at the most likely scenario. And so I use the same skill set I learned as a political analyst when I do my astrology. I know the realm of possibility and then what's more likely. Given we've had a lot of gun violence and it's coming back up, it tends to come in waves. When we have Aries energy going on, it could be excessive use of force by police officers. It could be another white guy having a bad day or trying to use the mental health defense, which is bullshit, by the way. Um, it could be radicalization. It could be, um, again, it could be lightning and fires. It could be, it could be a lot of natural causes as well. And then um, it could be stuff happening in Asia as well. And the reason I say that is even though we look to Asia as being east, from my position, it's to my west. Because I, I'm sitting here on the west coast and Asia is to the west of me. Um, and so, I know, I know, we're all taught it's east, but 
that it's east of, of Greenwich. It's not east of Los Angeles. It's west of it. Because um, we would look across the ocean, which is to our west. Um, so that could be it. It could be stuff going on, you know. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, it could be... It could be a whole lot of things. So um, I will definitely be writing up some very special Aries moon transit forecasts. It's wild. It's wild energy. So you want to be careful. You want to be cautious. You want to be mindful. Um, it could mean, especially on the West Coast, be careful driving because there might be a lot of road rage that day there could be just you know i don't know it, it, people act like nuts when they don't control their consciousness and in groups humans don't usually rise to their best so um and it would be male aggressors with this energy it would be male aggressors and so um yeah this is this is fiery stuff so I'm talking about this because I want you to be safe. I want you to be okay. I want you to be prepared. And on the positive level, and I'm, I think I'm going to give you guys here on the podcast just a little more positive, and then I'll talk to the, the patrons behind the scenes because I don't want to leave you hanging, and I don't want you to just have to join Patreon to get all the good juice. Um, so how this can be a good activation, it could make you it could inspire you to be more active if you've been sedentary um you could feel like changing up your look or putting yourself out there you might have been thinking about applying for jobs but you haven't done it yet you haven't felt like you had the self-esteem for it you might get a sudden uptick in self-esteem um you might be more communicative than you've been you might decide to do something that you've been afraid to try. You might feel braver. You might feel full of energy when you felt kind of lethargic. Um, you might be ready to go play and, and have fun and create. It, it could go a whole lot of ways on a personal level. I don't want you to think it's all going to be bad because nothing in life is all good or all bad. Right? I've said it time and time again on this podcast. If you go to an airport on any given day and you just sit and you watch people, you'll see people having the best reunion, seeing people they love. You'll see people having a falling out and fighting. You'll see people you know, grieving. You'll see people having a neutral day. You'll see irritated people. You'll see happy-go-lucky people. You'll be seeing people go to the bar because they're afraid of, fl afraid of flying everybody's having a different experience all at the same time with the same energy because everybody has a different chart so i'm giving you the big picture look and giving you some warnings but it doesn't mean you're gonna have a bad day okay so i just want to reassure you of that um for all the people who ask me these questions what about aries rising what about aries moon what about aries saturn what about guess what it activates for everybody Wherever Aries is in your chart, and yes, you have it. Stop using CoStar. Stop using CoStar. Please stop using CoStar. It's shitty. It's shitty software. Um, if you got to use an app, use something like Time Passages if you don't know how to read an astrology chart. I, I don't get any kickbacks. Yeah, I'm just saying, I, I, I use Celeste 1.2 because I'm an astrologer and I know how to read charts. Okay, guys? Um, but uh, it, it doesn't mean it's going to be bad for you. Okay? And, and everybody has Aries in their chart. I have a walkthrough called Intro to the Natal Chart. If you're a patron, it's linked in Discord. Actually, if you're not a patron, you can still join Discord because we have public and private spaces. Um, and um, it's a free post, okay? It's a free post. It teaches you how to make your chart on astro.com and then how to kind of identify just the squiggles and lines of what they mean. It's not, it's not going to teach you how to read a birth chart because that takes a long time and I have longer classes for that. But it, it gets you started, okay? And um, that'll help you understand things a little bit more than some of the stupid TikToks I see that promote not good astrology. But anyway, let me tell the patrons 
what Mars and Aries is going to do as it wreaks havoc <laughs> with their charts. And no, it isn't necessarily going to wreak havoc. I'm looking forward to this transit personally. And, um, you know, just again, on a collective level, we're going to see some stuff. So we'll be back with some patron shout outs and, uh, and then uh, some fun chats about Mars and Jupiter conjuncting on May 29th. bunch of patrons here on the live stream. I can only see who's here from the comments. I can't see like usernames or anything, but I've got Saffron and Jessica and Alex and Jane and Maria and Zach. Um, do I have two Marias or one Maria? One Maria, because I have multiple Marias who are podcast or patrons. Uh, we've got Kathy, who's sister like. we got Alicia. Uh, let's see, I think I mentioned Jessica. Carla, Laura, so uh, we've got about 19, we've had between 19 and 23 people here on the live stream, so it's pretty cool. Um, I have these at weird days and I don't really set a schedule. Sorry guys, but you know, Sag Mars, surprise, even though I don't like surprises. I know it's weird, but anyway, we have had a bunch of new patrons join. Um, it's just been wild and crazy and cool. Um, and I, I grew on TikTok too, and I was wondering why, but I think I know now. Uh, I don't know if you guys know who the famous uh, psychic John Edwards is, but he started following me. I didn't realize this. And um, one of my followers told me he mentioned me on a live stream. And so I was like, oh, that's why I grew that day. Cause I was like, I don't know why I'm growing. I don't know what happened. Um, so John Edwards, if you're listening to my podcast, I think you're really cool and thank you for following me and thank you very much for mentioning me. And I'm just going to really assume that you're listening to this um, <laughs> because it's so cool. Um, yeah. If you don't know who he is, check him out. He is the real deal. He has a lot of ethics and that's something I've always liked about him um, because as a metaphysician, which I am, which means I study the esoteric and, um, and the... Uh, how do I put it? The esoteric and, and um, energy, as well as divinatory arts. Um, it, it, there, there are things we need to be mindful of, and I've always found him to be so, so I appreciate that. So we've got a bunch of new patrons. We've got Mina, we've got Rochelle, we've got Maggie, we've got Layla, we've got Catherine, Wendy, Paige, Nicole, Sarah, Lou, Harmony, Brittany, Kelly, Vicky, Beth, Sibstar, Jackie, Ryan, or Ryan, uh, Renee, Maria, Tara, Carrie, Carrie, Jacqueline, Allie, Kamal, Kier, uh, Kristen, Allison, Dee, Rachel, Gabby, Denise, Krista, Stephanie, Jennifer, Samantha, Joe, Tiffany, Amber, Janelle, Aaron, Robin, Susan, Gabby, James, oh no, oh no, I've got so many more. Like, it's crazy, guys. Uh, let's see, let me get to James. Because I know that was the last one. Amber, James, where is it? Gabby. There we go. Oh, and my phone's quitting on me. Because it's Mercury freaking retrograde. If I did merge... That's what I would I would make a sign I would make a shirt that said Mercury freaking retrograde. I am not wanting to do merch because I don't want to make things that end up in a landfill. So I will continue teaching and creating information products because I feel more ethical with that. And I just think we live in times where we have to be mindful of things. Um, yeah, yeah, Jane, for real. Yeah, very, very, very cool dude yeah 
So, alrighty. Thank you, patrons. Next up, we are going to talk about, or I am going to talk about, um, Mars conjunct Jupiter on May 29th. And, um, but I'm not going to talk a lot about it because I want you guys to listen to, uh, Nicole Cormier and I, and, um, and then the mod talk as well. So I'm just going to mention Mars and Jupiter conjunct. And then in the next episode, we'll talk more in depth. I'm uh, just going to give you a teaser because I'm teaching a class about it on Saturday. And uh, I, I don't mean to brag, but I'm going to go like decorate cookies at like a studio party in Hollywood where Amy Puller is going to be. And yeah, enough said about that. Enough said. I'll get pictures. I promise. Okay, so Mars ingresses into Aries only two degrees away from Jupiter. So technically they're conjunct the minute that Mars ingresses. But on May 29th, they are exact. On a, on a mundane level, again, these are not a good couple of days. These are going to be like really big, volatile energy days. It could be storms. It could be political. It could be riots. It could be protesters. Now, this is global. This isn't just in the United States. I know like 89% of my listeners and viewers are from America, but please understand transits are global and they are impacting every country and every group of people on earth. Okay. It's not just us. It's not just where you live. It's other places. So when I make a prediction and you're a little worried, nothing happens in your area. Thank God. Um, it doesn't mean something isn't happening somewhere else. So remember these are global and I'm not looking at every locality chart. On an individual level, this is an amazing opportunity to kind of make your own luck. Now, I have Mars and Sag, so it's kind of like having Mars and Jupiter conjunct a little bit. It's like in a minor, minor level. It's uh, This is major level coming up, but in a minor level, having Mars and Sag is kind of like having Jupiter and Mars conjunct because Jupiter rules Sagittarius. And when I was growing up, people used to say, oh, you're so lucky you get to do these things. The thing is, is while everybody else was partying or everybody else was going to sleepovers or everybody else was going to the mall on the weekend, I was either practicing, studying or working towards a goal. So as much as what people would see when I performed classical music or jazz or when I got to like become an exchange student, what they didn't see was all the hours and hours and hours and hours that I put in. So when I won something, it was due to skill. It was due to practice. It was due to time in. What they also didn't know was all the losses that led up to it. All the trial and error, all the times I didn't do well in a competition. And so as a teenager, it was really frustrating because people like, oh, you're so lucky. And I'm like, you know, honestly, I'm not even great at games of chance. You know, I am not the person you want to take to the craps table. I'm just not. But if it comes to skill building and practice. And so that's about making your luck. And, and I remember I was in a kind of an argument with a friend because that's what you do when you're 15 or 16, right? You get into little spats. And my friend was just like kind of being bitchy about it. And I looked at them and I was like, I'm not lucky. I make my own damn luck. And if there wasn't a phrase for Mars Jupiter conjunct, that would be it. And that's why I'm teaching the class Make Your Luck on Saturday, May 21st at 6 p.m. Pacific. If you can't be there, all of my classes get recorded. I'm not just going to talk about Aries, Mars, and Jupiter conjunct. I'm going to talk about it in general and then what it means through the signs and houses. Uh, because Mars conjuncts Jupiter about once a year. You know, Mars, Mars moves pretty quick. It's not always, you know, maybe every two years. Um, like I said, it's approximate. But Mars, Mars does that, you know. And so it's something we have an opportunity to do. 
um, with regularity. And it's good to know it's coming so you can get ready for it. Just like I give you heads up for shitty things so you can either avoid it or kind of mitigate things, you know, do some uh, risk assessment, risk management. Uh, also getting ready for the good stuff so you can really grab hold of that energy and maximize the opportunity. So with Mars in Aries conjunct Jupiter, this is like putting a magnifying lens on a part of your chart. And I just went through that with patrons in the replay. Well, you can see it in the replay if you're a patron, um, but the ones here live. Um, it's going to energize the part of your chart that has Aries in it. And all of you have Aries in your chart. All of you. Okay. So um, it, this is where you're going to want to make your luck. So I'll just give some examples. I'm not going to do all 12 because I've already talked to myself horse about this. But like if it's the first house, you're putting yourself out there. This is the time to take that risk you've been wanting to take, to put yourself out there. If you've been on the fence about it, if you've been nervous or anxious about it, you now is the time. Uh, put yourself out there in new ways. If it's like the sixth house, this is the time. If, you need, if you've been thinking about applying for a new job, do it now. Um, if you have a job interview that day and Jupiter and Mars are in that sixth house, woo, that's good juju. Um, if it's aligned, it's happening. Um, and then if like, you know, Mars is in the ninth house and you're, you need to do marketing, that's a great time for that. So those are all examples. Um, we'll get into that in more depth in the class. Um, right now, I speaking of classes, I want to introduce to you one of my dear friends, uh, I've known her since 2007, Nicole Cormier, a brilliant numerologer. She's who I go to, okay, when I have questions. Look, professionals work with each other here. She's come to me. We've walked each other through a whole lot of life, and she'll be teaching numerology and potentially some tarot classes as well, and tarot and numerology combined at the more advanced level. These will be electives at the mystery school. Um, I just, I'm not going to say anymore. I just want you to listen to her and uh, enjoy. Okay, I'm super excited, guys. I have a very special guest here, my good friend and colleague, Nicole Cormier, or Cormier for those of you who can't pronounce Cormier. It's not hard, but there we go. She's also known as the numerology lady on TikTok, and I believe Instagram, you use that handle as well? I Yeah, I do. I, I, I took my account down though, because it was so full of fakes. <laughs> Right. I don't like Instagram. So if you guys are following me there, go back to TikTok. <laughs> I just, it's owned by Zuckerberg and the you know, bad energy. I don't like it. So, um, Nicole, we're going to be chatting some numerology because um, you're going to be teaching some classes at the Mystery School. I know. I am. I'm so excited. I know. Me too. We met so many years ago. It was like 2007, and we were crocheters, and it was through the Crochet Liberation Front. And then we found out we were also woo woo ladies. Um, and I'm excited because you're who I go to when I want my numbers read because you are no bullshit. You just are right there, and you are as practiced as I am in your field. And so I, I'm wondering, like, <clears throat> What of all things that you could like let people understand about numerology? What would be the number one thing? I I think numerology is a great tool for understanding yourself. Um, it it does some of the best personality delineation, uh, be, you know, next to astrology that I've ever found. Mm -hmm. And and you can make that as complex or as simplified as you want. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And you're really good at it. I mean, it, it's, you've spent, like, when did you find numerology? How long have you been practicing? I found, well, I found numerology in, um, in the Canadian Living Magazine in 1987. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I used to sneak in the girls' bathroom and smoke cigarettes and tell them what their career should be <laughs> until I got busted. And I love it. For smoking in the bathroom. And then I found uh, books, like, you know, a couple of years later, I was in university and I had a little more freedom. And, and I found books in the bookstore at the same time that I was discovering tarot. And one day it dawned on me, these two things really go well together. Yeah. And, yeah. and I started reading older books. And, mm -hmm. and so once I got into a lot of the older books that were being written about uh, tarot and, and other occult things yes. kind of before that new age explosion. Mm -hmm. And I, I realized these are really serious, studious books. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you say older, what, what time period are you talking about? Well, I was, you make friends with your librarian. Um, Absolutely. I, I was going to the public library on Spring Garden Road in Halifax and the Dalhousie Library University. And they had all kinds of stuff in, in the back rooms that nobody else was allowed to go in. Ah, uh, the restricted section. And, and the university itself, because, you know, they, they may not be offering degrees in the occult, but people who took classics and history and mm -hmm. things like that might need to go and look at these things. So you could go in and look at all these books on microfiche mm -hmm. and librarians would let me read. So I was reading a lot of really old things from so back in the days of Socrates and things, you know, or medieval grimoires and, and half yes. of it I didn't understand. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and and mm -hmm. there was a, there was an occultist in Halifax that wrote books for Llewellyn and I emailed mm. him today. And this was, um, I had already been well into tarot and numerology and I emailed him uh, back in the mid nineties about a bunch of stuff I was trying to sift through. And he said, my God, he goes, he said, that's like trying to take the dog for a walk on Mars here. Go read these books. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, the medieval stuff was really good. It's so funny because kids today are taught to make fun of the medieval, but you have to sift through it and you have to know how to read it um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> because it's, uh, it's, especially if you're doing any kind of predictive work and you mm -hmm. have to be able to understand metaphor. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Not all literal. No. Um, so a lot of times questions come up on our forum because we have the awakening thread in the discord and people will ask about angel numbers. Now I happen to know the answer to this, but I would love you to explain it as a numerologer. Um, how, if at all, are synchronistic number patterns and numerology related? Okay. So there's, there's branches off of numerology. Like when you say to me, numerology, what I think of is what I do, which is making a chart and telling someone about themselves and answering questions about their future and maybe having a look at their past, you know, telling them what this day is going to be like for you or this hour during this day, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, repeating numbers, um, you know, like numbers that show up in nature and whatnot that I don't I don't consider that to be the same thing in numerology. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, there's sacred geometry and sacred mathematics, mm -hmm. which, you know, examines numbers that repeat in chemistry and physics and, mm -hmm. and mathematics and whatnot. And, and that end of it. And that's, that's a lot. It's mm -hmm. not, it's, it's not something though that, you would take and use in a chart, but mm -hmm. it's, it's stuff that's good to know. Um, mm -hmm. But the angel numbers, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not a professional answer. Uh. Um, I, I give that answer a lot when it comes to certain uh, uh, pseudo astrological topics. So I understand. <laughs> um, angel, did, I, I saw angel numbers kind of show up out of nowhere in somewhere around 95, 96, 97, mm -hmm. because there was that, you know, there was that corral of, you know, new age, white lady, uh, life oh coach God. oracles that showed up from out of nowhere, churning yes. out books, angels and oracle cards and 
I can't even think of the one who led the pack, but she has since converted back to Christianity. Oh, this God, about yeah. Her. I can't even. Oh, I her. Her. Yeah, I never liked her because she was <laughs> fake. Any anybody who was actually psychic could tell during virtue was just bullshitting. And so angel numbers popped up out of that, and I, I'll be honest, I don't, I don't like them. I think they're just like sugar coated and. I I don't know. I, it's it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Now, you know, I, I am going to say I, I don't like how they're popularized, but synchronistic signs do mean well, something, but not, I don't think, what Doreen Virtue came up with. No, see, and I, what I think is the angel number ladies back in the day. Mm-hmm. And they they took tiny grains of things like numerology and astrology and just made yeah. it really superficial, yeah. um, and and that's why the angel numbers make me cranky because it's a really superficial look at, yeah. at numerology. Yeah, and and I find a lot of people like when I go on to TikTok, everybody wants to know about two 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 and three three three, and <laughs> there's only so many ways I can say it, guys. <laughs> Right. It, it, the the extent to which I think those types of repeating numbers mean something to people is the extent to which I believe we just naturally see repeating numbers because we exist in a digital age. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that people prior to you know digital clocks in that in the late sixties, what some people did see repeating numbers, mm-hmm. but um, it wasn't it wasn't as big of a thing. Mm-hmm. And and they weren't, you know, when you go to the angel number websites and stuff right now, it's all every every number that you look up is it literally your angel guides would like you to know that everything will be fine and it's all wonderful and right. manifest abundance, manifest abundance. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And it just, you know, it, when you study numbers against astrology and, and all the correspondence. Yeah that they share and and you you start to realize 11 11 is not you know it's not a wonderful you know sweet number it's there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in 11 um i have one in my numerology chart i know (laughs) well yeah there's a lot of chaos in in 11 it's yes And when I, and I tried briefly for about five minutes, I tried to embrace the angel numbers and I sat down on my phone and I made up a bunch of these little memes to put on my Instagram account. And then I hated myself. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, See kids, this is what happens when old metaphysicians sit around and drink coffee and chat. (laughs) I have hated myself for a few of my TikToks as well. (laughs) Oh, God. Yeah. Popularizing it. Now, again, I will say from a metaphysical standpoint, anything can be used as a gateway to get your attention. And um, re- synchronicities and repetitiveness, including digital science from a metaphysical, non-numerological, non-astrological. If it gets your attention, there's a reason for that. And you need to think about what you're thinking about because yeah. there could be something, it could be a warning. It could be uh, Hey, that was a good idea. It could be, Hey, you need to change your lane. Um, there could be a lot of things behind it, but it's not numerology and it's certainly not astrology, nor is degree theory astrology. Just saying, <laughs> uh, don't get me started. On that. <laughs> it is not valid astrology um at all so we tend to be opinionated around here aren't we nicole um so when you're going to teach at the school what are some things people could expect to learn from you besides (laughs) (laughs) bless you well i like to I like to teach people how to do a really good core chart. Mm-hmm. Um, I just uh, to me the core chart is every bit as important as the natal chart is in astrology. Yeah, 
And I think if you've got a good solid core chart, you can do so much for the client. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I really want to dive into to the core charts with people. And then I, I know there's, there's also, I've got so many, like my head buzzes when I start to talk about this. I've got so many <laughs> ideas for classes in my head. And one of them is with tarot and the numbers. And, and, and yeah, and sometimes I do, I flush out my numerology readings by pulling out the corresponding cards. And if I, if I'm drawing a blank because they work, mm -hmm. um, I mean, tarot cards are like flashcards for metaphysics and yes. esoteric sciences. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, then there's there, the other thing I would love to teach because I, and I'm sure it exists out there. I know it exists because I learned it. Um, but I don't see a lot of people talking about it or teaching is numerology based on sounds. And you know that mm -hmm. because I've gotten you to speak for me. Yes. Um, but nobody, nobody really teaches it. People talk about it. Um, one of the reasons I don't use the Pythagorean number letter key is because it's just based on an order of letters mm -hmm. and it's not based on sounds. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like if you can get a number key that gives you sounds, it, it, it doesn't matter how somebody spells their name. What's more important is what they say. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, and their their numbers are, are vibrations, just like sounds are vibrations. And, Absolutely. And and one of the things I've noticed over the last few years is the huge change in how people are saying their names. Yes. And I mean, you know, 2020 was a hell of a year. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. 2021. Uh, it was the beginning of the end, my friends. It was the beginning of the end. <laughs> but listening, listening to people talk and how they say their names, because I've got clients that I've been reading for for years, and I noticed a big difference. I mean, it does. They they may not hear it themselves, and people mm -hmm. around them may not hear it. But when I'm listening to you say your name over and over and over again on Facebook Messenger. I could right. pick up those little differences and people have become, or at least what they're projecting out there when they make their, their sacred sounds, when they say their name, mm -hmm. people have become, a lot of people have become much more independent. Yes. And much more resourceful. Mm -hmm. And then there are some people I've listened to them say their name and I'm realizing that they are much more withdrawn and they, yeah they are much more subdued and I find you're going to, most of my clients are going to be one way or the other. Most of them are much more mm -hmm. independent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I know everybody struggled the last few years, but it's just interesting to see how they change and what they say and kind of what they're sending out there to the universe. Because every time you open your mouth, you're making magic and, and people, people don't realize that in the, early stages of um, witchcraft and occult and, and that. Yeah, but, and metaphysics, I yeah. mean, I, I'm a witch that has absolutely no tools <laughs> and I don't. <laughs> I don't. I, yeah, I don't either. I see all these TikTok videos and I'm like, I would love to make a video about that, but I don't have one of those or one of those or one of those. And, right. and mostly it's because I've spent so many years, the more I immerse myself in numbers and sounds, mm -hmm. the less... I, all the stuff I had just kind of disappeared and went away. It got rehomed right. until one day I realized I have nothing left because I don't want it and I don't need it. Yeah. 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 We're on the same raft on that. I mean, I use my mm -hmm. rings. I use my rings mm -hmm. because I'm so receptive, but what you just said about sound is backing up what I've been telling everybody is to train your mercury because you're both a receiver and a transmitter and mercury mm -hmm. is both. It's the great antenna. And then we are the transponders. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so when you do speak, it's, it's the words themselves matter less than the intonation and, and the, the sounds. So yeah. 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 I love that. I love correspondences, mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm with you. I, I, I might light a candle here and there if I feel like being, you know, a little mm -hmm. extra, but. 
<laughs> also, I think like when we started coming into it, there was the new age fluff stuff, and then there was the back of the dark bookshelves. Yeah. And where the real shit shit went down. Yeah. You know, where the hippies sat and the, you know, the real old school metaphysicians or the people in their 80s and 90s. Yes. Oh my God, they were the real deal. You know, back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. Like that guy on TikTok. It was the 90s. <laughs> but yeah, that there was some good shit. And we need to pass that on because it's being so obscured. Mm -hmm. And kind of 1965. Yes. Um, oh, boomers. <laughs> they fuck up everything they touch and if you're a boomer i'm not talking about you i'm talking about people in general um yeah so now going back to the core chart now, and we're going to do a free class one you know and it'll probably come out in june sometime um don't hold me to dates because i'm still getting the mystery school ready um there's a lot of little fiddly computer stuff going on on the back back end um but there's um when it comes to a core chart what does a core chart consist of like well that's actually going to differ from numerologist to numerologist mm -hmm. what i do for my core charts is i start with i do from the name i do a cornerstone i do an expression a heart and a destiny mm -hmm. and then from the birth date i do your three phases of life, which are similar to Saturn returns, but not exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do a life path, which is basically a set of lessons and it's mm -hmm. like motivations and driving forces. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, from, from there, I look at your skill set, which is your birth date. Mm -hmm. I kind of look at not quite a generational influence, but the year you were born, everybody mm -hmm. who was born that year is going to carry a certain beat with them mm -hmm. and that's important to look at too um mm -hmm. and and then from then on what i do is i calculate for most of my clients that get their core chart done i calculate a 12-month personal year and from the birth date i i break down the year into what are called triads so you get a look mm -hmm. at some three general influences at the whole year the general influence running in the background the whole year, which is the personal year and mm -hmm. then personal months. And then every now and then, if I see a per a, an interesting personal day that comes up for them, I'll throw that in there too. And then there are clients who will come in and I don't do those big charts for them every time, but they'll talk about certain things going on in their life. And I will do, uh, I'll just cast a small chart for the month or something. Right. Right. Yeah. That's like when I do like a lunar return or yeah. something like that. Yeah where it gives me some details, the solar return is more general. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm, yeah. I'm working on a new chart Ooh. that I've, I've never seen anybody do before. Um, and I have to keep trying it out on, I'm, I'm running everybody's stuff through it as, as I <laughs> think that I'm, I'm doing everybody, man. <laughs> I love it. I'm doing everybody. I have got a scribbler full of charts that I have handwritten in between clients at the salon where I am constantly. And it, it struck me because I was looking at shapes mm -hmm. and I was, there, there, there's an author, she's an astrologer and a numerologist. Her name is Dusty Bunker. And she's a, she's an old school feminist. She wrote mm. this great book in the seventies called astrology and the divine triangle. Mm. And so it's, it's two squares and a triangle is this chart. She charts out your life on these mm -hmm. shapes. And I was looking at that one day and I thought, because the other thing that I studied is um, I, for 10 years now, I've been uh, practicing Mahabot astrologer. Mm -hmm. I don't talk about it a lot because there's a lot of gatekeeping in Burmese astrology. So, Mm -hmm. and, and I kind of use it sometimes alongside my numerology charts because it gives mm -hmm. me a little extra clarification, but it's not a huge involved system of astrology. It's very quick. Mm -hmm. uh, and it suddenly dawned on me that I could do something like that, but 
I won't say any more. <laughs> right? Yeah, you got to develop that. Anymore. Hold that to your chest. Yeah. Because when we develop stuff, you know, this can be a crazy yeah. industry. So yeah, every time I get excited and I want to open my mouth, I think about the time I walked into the bookstore and saw my scarf pattern with somebody else's name attached to it. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know all about that. So, yeah. So <coughs> I've said too much. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We're going to move along from that. So in a beginning class, it would be like life, you know, understanding the yeah. difference between, you know, what the different pathways are, how to yes. calculate them and how to understand them. Mm -hmm. um, we'll do a little intro to make sense of all of this. And then, um, then Nicole will be teaching that. She'll probably be teaching tarot as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll have her on again to talk tarot. We don't want to blur the waters because each one of these things works together. Mm -hmm. But they need to be studied independently because you got to know what you're doing. You know, mm -hmm. you can't just mix and match and swap. That that that's causing a lot of issues. Um, I see in the public, you know, in the popular realm. Yeah, people learn just enough to be dangerous in all of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or just enough to be annoying. <laughs> yeah, and there's there's a difference between gatekeeping. And saying, no, we're not going to let you in. And saying, hey, if you want to do this, here's how you do it. Um, and, you know, people like Nicole have spent decades honing their knowledge and skills. And same here. You know, we, we were the weirdos who were obsessed by it. Um, oddly enough, I think it was like the first 20 members of the Crochet Liberation Front were like all woo-woo people. <laughs> go figure, go figure. And I'm probably sure I spoke in a very different tone than, than I do now. I was in a very different place in my life. Um, I'll never forget um, in 2016, I went to you for a reading because, or 2017, one or the other, because I was blowing up my life. Ah, good times. And, um, and you were pointing out, I think my life path number is an eight. Mm -hmm. And you're like, you know, and I was broke AF because I had literally tossed out my entire life, like my business, my marriage, everything. <laughs> it just was like, I had my car, my computer and my cell phone <laughs> and my dog. Uh, <laughs> that was it. That's what we had. <laughs> oh, my God. What a year. I was getting ready for 2020, though. So I knew I had to like blow my life up or my life would blow up in 2020. That's why I did it early. So I'd be ready with new foundations. But you were like, so life path, your job is to get comfortable with wealth. And I'm like, I'm fucking broke. I'll probably be <laughs> broke the rest of my life. I've just thrown everything away. <laughs> Oh, I'm not wealthy yet, but I'm, I'm getting used to, to the idea of, of bringing it in so I can build good projects. So thank you for that. That stayed in the back of my mind. No problem. Because um, you reminded me that it wasn't about being a wealthy, wealthy asshole. Yes. Because we don't do that around here. No. No. We're going to fund really cool projects, though. But um, Nicole is amazingly accurate. Um, like I said, there's, she's walked me, we walked through some pretty crazy times in life, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> I, I, will, I will never forget texting you while I was in the airport, leaving my ex and you're like, get on the plane, <laughs> Just yeah. on, keep walking forward, get on the plane. <laughs> yep. 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 And then you did it for me. Like what a year later, two years later. <laughs> Yeah. Something like that. We walked each other through these things. So, and we've never met in the physical. I don't mm -hmm. No, We, we did. Did we at a crochet nope. conference? No, we haven't. Not yet. Nope. We have not. not yet. We've been friends since 2007. Guys, you can make really close connections without ever meeting. There's no, our spirits aren't limited by physicality. And you know when you know. So um, 
I will only have people I know and trust teach um, because metaphysics is serious. You know, it's serious. It's good to know. It empowers you. And there's a reason it is, it gets obscured. You know, because then you're not empowered. And so we are the guardians. <laughs> <laughs> We could be like, like, what were the creatures that were not skakesies in the dark crystal? What was this called? Oh, 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 gosh, no. Uh, see, I remember the skakesies name. I can't remember right? the name of the other ones. The nice but ones like, didn't scare the yeah, shit out of us. I love them with the little spirals on their faces. Yes. Yes. That's us. Yes. Bridging the light and the dark. And then they brought the skakesies and the other ones together. Yes. Because we're all one. But yeah, so anywho, I am so excited to do this. So guys, um, one of the ways now, if you can't wait and you want a reading from Nicole, is it numerate? Uh, what, what's your email address or not your email? Not that. What's your website address? Oh, well, my website is kind of in the process of moving. Um, people can find me at kofi.com forward slash the numerology lady. Okay, I will put that in the podcast description. Yeah. Um, and you can uh, do that and um, say hi to her in the Discord. She's in there. And we'll be, again, we'll be having, um, we'll be having Nicole have a class. It'll be one of the electives to the core, the core material, which trains that mercury. I'm so excited about this. Um, <laughs> if I could just, you have no idea how many, it, this is not your typical platform I'm working on. And it's just, mm -hmm. like, it's not hard, but I swear they've made it more complicated than necessary to make you feel like you're, it's worth paying for. Cause I've used <laughs> other platforms and I'm like, if it wasn't for the integrated like email system, I don't know. There's other platforms that are like way more usable. <laughs> it's like, okay, fine. I'll use this one until we can get our own website built. But for right now, we'll do this because they've got the dedicated ho hosting and I don't want to do that. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, as you well know, but it is also Mercury retrograde. So we're taking everything slow and just working on stuff that's already in progress. But anyway, my dear, as always, a pleasure. Guys, mm -hmm. uh, I cannot emphasize enough that this, this woman is just absolutely as scary accurate as I am. We often compare <laughs> notes about what's going on in the world. <laughs> and and uh, we, we have a fun time cackling. <laughs> in our croneness <laughs> and yes the world is a shit show right now but there's a hell of a lot to, to have hope about and we see that too so um but you gotta know how to navigate it and as, have as many tools as you can so that's our hope to equip people anyway so good to speak with you nicole yes it was good to speak to you Alrighty, all right we will see you later Okay. <laughs>
Like, what do I want to learn from it? Like, what do I want to experience from it? And I don't know. I was thinking about this while we were in class, too. (laughs) Not exactly the same, but I was thinking about how I mean, related to my dad, that my South Node is in Pisces, and I definitely fell into that sort of Mm. It was in the first house. So like selfishly being out on my own, not wanting to be tied down to anybody for anything. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So now I'm learning like I'm, I can be comfortable being alone, but that doesn't mean I have to be, I can consciously choose who I put into my life, who I work with. Mm-hmm. I don't have to be a martyr doing everything myself. Mm-hmm. There's no way I could get to my goals without help, without a community to help. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's powerful insight. Mackenzie, why did you pick to <laughs> experience <laughs> the magic in the mundane and healing? like going towards that path? You know, I don't know. I think I'm, (laughs) I'm with you. Like I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, I think that, you know, everything that happens will play a role in like whatever we choose to do with our life. And like, we get to choose what we do. So I don't know. (laughs) wise words <laughs> well and we're supposed to like use our own pain and heal from that and then help others heal so it's a big task Scorpio North Node yeah <laughs> me and Shane <laughs> right Hi. same raft raft buddy I don't know that we always know definitively why we chose the life we did. But I know from experience that if you stay open and trust the inklings that come in, you get some clues now and then. It's kind of like choosing. Like I always use the amusement park ride. It's like, well, why do you choose that ride? Sometimes it's a new ride. And you want a new experience. And sometimes it's your favorite ride. And you just do that ride the whole time. Like, I like this again. I know when I was younger, I, I thought I was supposed to be a healer. It was before I became an astrologer. And... Um, well, of course, I had South Node and Virgo. <laughs> Why would I come in with those abilities and skills? And I kept myself alive with them. <laughs> That's why. Pick those. And I don't know why I chose the Pisces North Node, but I'm glad I get to do what I do with you guys. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. When you, I don't know where you were talking about this, but you mentioned how you would go through everything up until this point to have this moment. And that is very true. Yeah. To be here with people that are like hearted, it's Mm -hmm. really amazing. It's powerful. And I'm going to end this on the mod talk because uh, I think it was just a really poignant 
moment. We've got the Jupiter and Mars conjunction, or Mars-Jupiter conjunction is the right way to say that. The Mars-Jupiter conjunction occurs on May 29th and uh, stay tuned. I'll be talking more about that before it happens. And if you want to know how that's going to impact you, you can join the Make Your Luck class on Saturday, May 21st. I'm Lori Rivers, and I want to thank each and every one of you for listening. <laughs>